John called me and said, uh, Klaus, I'm putting together this band and uh, it's called Plastic Owner Band. So I said, oh shit, no, what's this Plastic Owner Band? You know, we didn't know Yoko, I had never met her and I know she was avant-garde. She was doing those things with the naked butts. And, you know, what am I going to do, go on stage naked or something? So I had no idea and I said, Paul, I said to, to John, I said to John, you have to explain that a little, and he got already angry. He said, well, I want to put together a band that plays on uh, concerts, and we will make a tour, and we want to be in the studio, and Eric already said he's going to do it, and uh, you, now I'm asking you. I said, okay, let's do it. And that's how it started, and then a few days, or the next day or something, we were at the airport going to Toronto. That was crazy. That was really crazy stuff. Well, we were in the plane, and I made the last row of the plane, emptied it. Maybe Ellen White already told you the story. And the tow bar was right next to us in the last row. It was one of those planes where the tow was really loud, and I had an electric bass. I couldn't hear a thing. So no amp or anything. And John went through this thing. Well, we're going to do money. We're going to do it in A. And uh, it goes like this. Well, you know money. Next one. So that was the rehearsal for those songs. No real rehearsal. And I got really pissed off because he played to Cold Turkey. And Cold Turkey was a fantastic song. I thought, my God, you really get the shivers. Temperatures rising, you know. And he was, oh, really, I felt like cold turkey, this is it, you know. And I thought, we, we can't rehearse this here. And you have to really think about it, think up some licks and, and see how, how you can get this atmosphere across. So we didn't have the rehearsal, and that's what the version is like uh, we did in Toronto. It's just uh, nothing, you know. I mean, he's singing the song, but it has nothing to do with the, really, the way the record was later, which I love that record but we didn't have much of a rehearsal. And we went straight into the stadium, right down there, and Hell's Angel following us, and we drove down to the dressing room, and Ellen White didn't have a drum kit. I didn't know Ellen White. I didn't know, I couldn't even understand the word he was saying. He was from Newcastle or something. And uh, then uh, we just uh, had a little rehearsal in the, in the, um, in the, um, down there in, in the dressing, no, this is not a dressing room, it's like where the football is, you know, like concrete wall. There was this one amplifier, we all had to plug into the one amp, and uh, Alan had a snare drum, and that was it, you know, I think. Maybe he had a hi-hat, I can't remember. And that was our rehearsal. And then we had to go on stage. Alan, hadn't seen that drum kit before, he had to sit on a completely strange drum kit and we all plugged in some amps that were standing there. We had no idea. And so we just started playing. And it was very weird at first. I couldn't hear Eric. I couldn't hear John. Uh, the, uh, the, the monitor system it was really very, very hard. So, you know, people now see those Toronto concerts, they have to really think of what a tough job that was. You know, it was really hard. The audience loved it. It was great. Most of the people on a concert, they still know of the old Beatles. They would have loved to hear all the old Beatle tracks, and he, he didn't do that. So they loved to see John anyways. They would, they, I think they were very polite, too. In particular, when Yoko came and was singing, then it was very, very hard. You know, if, if, they, if it wasn't John, I think they would have thrown tomatoes on stage. And it's funny, because me, standing behind Yoko, I got a completely different feeling because for me it was an amazing thing she was doing. She was screaming and croaking like a dying bird and you, I really felt she was trying everything to express this hurt and this wish to have peace on earth. And I think that uh, you have to say one up for Yoko. You know. I think John was amazing. Because he, even on stage, you can see it when you see the Toronto films, he was going up to Yoko, he was hugging her, he was whispering in her ear. You know, he was really nice. He was supporting her the best he could. And he obviously he didn't give a shit what people said. 
Of course, he was uh, sad about it, but no. And Yoko, she has got a, in Germany, you say she has a thick skin, you know. There's not much you can do to throw her out of her balance. She has no stage fright. She doesn't know those things. So for her, for her that was easy, no problem.